At the end of uh, part one, Mark Mockingjay, um, basically Katniss has spent pretty much the whole film trying to get reunited with these people that she felt that she had um, kind of failed or left behind, which is uh, Pita, Anabaria, and myself. And uh, at the end of Mockingjay, part one, uh, we are sort of delivered to her in this very interesting way. And, um, you know, she sees that we're kind of shells of who we were. You know, it's a whole, it's a whole new world, it's a whole new game, and, and she's going to have to, uh, you know, basically deal with the aftermath of that. And how that feeds into Mockingjay, part two, is that I think that seeing the shape that we're in and the things that we were left with kind of fuels her desire even more um, to change the world, you know, to change everything as she sees it. And, you know, she's obviously being forced in so many different directions of who she should be and what she should do, but I think that finally she finds her own true motivation of what she wants. And, um, and I think that's what ends up fueling part two. Mockingjay Part 2, Joanna is a, um, it's funny because it's the first time in her entire life that she hasn't been uh, asked to be something that she's not. You know, she's, she's always had to be this, you know, this tribute and this, this woman and, you know, use her sexuality and use this, but all of a sudden she's been kind of stripped of all of those devices of manipulation or expectation. And I think she's a little bit, um, you know, uh, deranged by this lack of, uh, of, of, of what she should be doing, and so I think she's kind of barely holding on. Hello, it's Valerie here. For all you Harry Potter fans, did you know that Daniel Radcliffe went through 160 pairs of prop glasses filming the series? Yeah, I swear. For this and more movie facts, click on more videos.